Hey team, today we fight disaster and learn a special message of endurance. So strap in, it's about to get crazy. I'm feeling fall, so I thought it would be fun to paint fall colors. But first, let's tint the canvas. There, that's nice. Just gonna even it out. I never want a flat canvas, even in an underpainting. So I'm going to start on the back left with a lighter shade and work my way forward using darker shades. I also paint in the color at an angle because I think it's more dramatic. Ready to go? All right. So I put a little paint on my finger and made references where features of the painting are gonna go. Right, huh? And right, meow. I separate my colors on my palette so that I have room to mix. And I give each color its own white so that I can get a clean mix. This painting is gonna have a bunch of colors in it. I'm also gonna use sponges. I have two of them here. Later in the painting, I use a sea sponge. It doesn't matter what type you use, just don't use the kitchen sponge, because eating paint is bad. Then I get tapping. Whew. I get a little energetic when I tap, and my easel pays the price. I'm just using sap green and titanium white and tap tap tapping coloring. I get a little carried away and forget that I'm trying to follow the diagonal movement of the underpainting. Man, I'm not trying to be uptight, because I love to keep it loose. But there's got to be discipline, otherwise it just looks busy and, th and that sucks! But seriously, strike one for me. And now my color discipline goes. See how I'm almost vertical with my tappy? That's crappy. Strike two. And geez, this canvas is bouncing all over the place. I can't, just can't work like this. Mm, I must do something. Ta da! Ha <laughs> ha! I got mind control over the easel, man! Looks sturdy. How's it feel? Thumbs up? Well, alright! You guys, have you ever started to panic a little bit when the painting seems to not be going well and you think to yourself, I should just quit and set this project ablaze with cleansing fire? Well, that's where I'm at. And then something special happened. Oh, I like, I like, I like that picture. It's beautiful. Think so? I, yeah, I like the trees, I like the clouds. Uh, I think I like that part too. No, oh, really? Well, I'm covered up with some, um, some rocks. Yeah, that one's big. Mm -hmm. I might well appreciate it, thank you. That's my son, if you couldn't tell. We support each other. So he is on board, maybe I should be too. The light source is on the left, so I try to adjust where the highlights and shadows will play off each other. As Stefan Bauman says, we don't paint things, we paint effects of light. Hey guys, if you don't know who Stefan Bauman is, check the description for a link to his YouTube channel. He really knows what he is talking about. When I first heard him say that we don't paint things, we paint effects of light, it was mind blowing. It was a completely new way to look at painting for me. Before, I was very concerned about getting this tree to look right or this branch to have the right structure, and my paintings were disjointed and confusing, and not in a good way. When I started thinking about the effects of light, it made me think about the light source, which immediately had a positive effect on my paintings. By thinking about the light source, it made me think about how it would hit and bounce off what I was painting, how the light interacts, and where shadows would form. Playing with the light and forming contrast between light and shadow causes a lot of drama. Check out some of your favorite paintings, especially the old masters, and I bet you will find dramatic effects of light that help tell the story of the painting. It was a game changer for me. Now I just suck because I'm no good. Not because the features of my paintings aren't lighted and casting the proper shadow. So yeah, now back to this guy. Oh, um, I guess we have a visitor. Come in. Hello, <laughs> it's me, yay. I have good ideas. 
ideas that will be fun for everyone. Hooray! Uh, okay. Who are you? I'm the Good Idea Fairy, and I've come to give you good ideas. Hooray! Those rocks need more. <gasps> you think so too? I do. Yes. Well, okay. Anything else? Put more rocks in at the bottom and top! Yeah, okay. Hey, that's a good idea. Yes! There and there! Yes! That looks amazing! What a good idea! Thanks, good idea, fairy! Thumbs up! Don't forget to overdo it with the tapping! And the rocks need more! <laughs> yes! More! And now I'm off! Goodbye, good idea fairy! Thanks for stopping by! Come back anytime! Remember me! Bye bye! Whee! What a strange occurrence! Well, back to the rocks. That top rock didn't work out. So I had to let it go. Well, I guess it's a good idea, fairy, not a great idea, fairy. Obviously, I agree with needing to work the rocks more. And I'm not done. Oh no! When will I quit? Never! Although, I probably, I probably should. So, I probably should have mentioned before I am using gray and white and differing values of each to glaze on layer after layer of paint. I am slightly concerned with how bright those rocks are, but the forest on the mountainside is going to be bright, so it sh should, should mute the rocks a bit. I'm using a small detail round brush to draw in the cracks in the rocks. The canvas is dry. So I'm using it to brace my hand against so I can try and put the detail in. And then I paint over. And then back in. And then over. 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 Oh! Sorry guys. I got caught in a painting loop. It happens. It's a medical condition. Anyways. Here I am using white to outline and highlight the edges of the rocks. Now I take my small flat brush and try a different approach to getting these rocks in. I am really, really waiting for a happy accident to happen. I'm just sitting here, fingers crossed, trying to channel some, some inner Bob to come out. But it is proving to be elusive. In the meantime, I keep working it. I am liking the results better using the flat brush, but maybe I'm onto something. To me, it kept looking fake and not natural. So I keep working. <laughs> That's old school. As far as placement goes, I am not using the rule of thirds on this. I measured using the golden ratio and put the features on opposing sides. Greg, you may be asking, what is the golden ratio? <laughs> what an excellent question. Luckily, the professor is here to answer. Hey, professor. Well, hello, Greg. So the question has been asked. What do you have for us? Well, first off, I'd like to say what an honor it is to be on the show. Sure, sure. In mathematics, two quantities are in the golden ratio if their ratio is the same as the ratio of their sum to the higher of the two quantities. This measurement can be found by calculating the quantity of A and multiplying it by 1.61. Wow, okay, that's pretty good information. Thank you. 803. Oh. Okay. 398. Mm. Eight, seven, wow, that's a big number. Thanks for sharing, four, nine, eight, nine. That was a big one. So four, eight, four, eight. Okay. Wow. 
That was it. I'm not finished. Two. Whoa, dude. I know. I think 1.61 will do, Professor. Well, yeah. you sure. Multiplied by 1.61, apparently. And you'll find the quantity of B. Okay. All right. Thanks, Professor. I usually eyeball it, but I also cheat and use a gauge that I bought online. It's a great and big topic, and one that deserves its own show, I think. So stay tuned. What's y'all's experience with using the golden ratio in your art? Let me know in the comment section, and let's keep the conversation going. Okay, as advertised, I am now using a sea sponge and trying to put in some leaves from various trees. I'm starting to think that the bottom rock is a no-go. Yeah, no, it's it's got to go too. Huh. You know, I'm starting to think twice about that good idea, fairy. Did you call me? No. Well, here I am! You know what? You're a bad idea, fairy. You're right! That's not a bad idea! I didn't say any- What, you mean the tree? Yes! Paint a tree! A big red one! <laughs> with leaves! <laughs> it will be beautiful! Well, I was thinking that. I know! It's a good idea! Yay! It only looks out of place now! <laughs> it won't later, I promise! Whee! Totally, man. You, you know, you get me. You know that? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes! Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have used the red in the other parts of the canvas. What? No! <laughs> looks good. I promise. Just use the same green as the background. Won't that make it blend in with the background and make things flat? No! <laughs> Just paint it red. Okay. 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 That's pretty good. The color is close enough. That color is better. <laughs> Look at that! It's so pretty! <laughs> I, I think so too! <laughs> Yay! More is better! Yeah, it is! Use those colors on the rest of the canvas! It'll tie the painting together! <laughs> Yay! Yeah! Now yellow! Yellow everywhere! Hooray! More! It's too much! I should have stopped! No! It would have been a good idea too! <laughs> Bye! Next time on Studio 214, can the painting be saved? Who is the mysterious good idea fairy? Can she be trusted? Tune in next time for the shocking conclusion! This is Studio 214. Keep your paint dry and your mugs frosty.